What are you eating there? Chocolate covered almonds, because I need something to make your bad takes that you have on the show palatable. My bad takes? Takes. Your bad takes. Oh, I thought you were throwing a jab at me right there. I'm like, damn, that was harsh. <laughs> That's ruthless. Um, for the people who don't know, put that two and two together, but um we're back. We got a lot of fights this week, so we're gonna split it into two videos. But first we got uh let's do the MMA. I mean, what a what a show this weekend. Okay, let's start off with the one though. I want to start off with one championship. There's a couple of fights I want to talk about. Did you catch John Wayne Parr versus uh Nikki Holskins? I did not. I didn't get to see the one. The two, working. two of the greatest kickboxers of the era. One's 37. One John Wayne Parr is 44 with a plastic hip. So uh it, it is what it is. They they were down, they were throwing leather. Nikki Holskins hit him with a head kick, second round, put him to sleep. Crazy fight. I didn't I I was not a fan of, of either of them before this. I've never watched them fight, but I'm definitely watching some Nikki Holskins going forward. I had no idea that he fought Callum Smith in 2019. So you're a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, but what else happened on the card? John Lineker. Yes, yes, that brutal right. Uh, was it a right hand or left? I can't remember. I know he put him out. I think it was a straight right hand. It wasn't the first punch that knocked him down. It was the one after that totally destroyed him. So I was watching with Reese, and the whole time we're like, dude, if this guy straightens out his shots, he's going to put this guy out. Mm -hmm. He does bang, throws the right hand down the right down the pipe instead of throwing it looping like this. But he couldn't handle it, went to sleep. He's only 30 years old. He's, I was looking at his record. He has some really big wins. Beat Rob Font. Like, this guy's a real guy. Yeah, and he's been clad some close fights with some big names, too, like split decisions. Um, like, he's beat John Dodson and stuff. Good good names. Um, I'd like to see him fight for the title against Marais. Bibiano. Mariano, sorry. My bad. Dude, that just shows how good 135 pounds is across MMA everywhere. Yeah, it's crazy division. John Lineker versus Bibiano Fernandez is as good of a bantamweight title fight as you can get anywhere. I love that fight. Me too. Absolutely. Okay. Um, PFL. Did you catch any of the PFL? I did watch it. Um, I watched the whole main card. Um, I seen Khabib's uh, corner or Khabib's, I think, cousin. Was it his cousin? Uh, or was he just in his corner? Um, so that was... Kai Bala versus Stoja Dinovich. Yeah, he just destroyed him. Uh, that wasn't even really like that wasn't even the highlight of the card, dude. There was some good fights in it. Like uh, this British guy, I think his uh, first name is Brendan. I think Brendan Lonane destroyed some Brazilian guy, Marias. I can't. I don't have his first name. It says Marias, but Lonane. This guy was putting it on the man. Just he was the only knockout of the card, I believe. Um, Baba Lance, Jenkins. Sorry, Baba Jenkins. Bubba Jenkins upset Lance Palmer, the featherweight champion. What did you think about that? Huge win. And for Lance, uh, I'm actually a big Lance Palmer fan, but Bubba Jenkins is coming on the show. So I was hoping he'd get the win because he said after this fight he'll come on the show. He won, so I'm, I'm not going to I'm gonna bug him now. If he was to lose, I'm not going to say come on the show and talk about your loss. So I'm so happy he won. The guy looks like has potential since Bellator. He won a small title, and then he went to PFL. This guy might be a problem. Dude, like – he be, he was an NCAA Division One wrestling champion. He was two and one against Palmer in NCAA wrestling. Now he's one and zero in MMA. This this puts Palmer in a tough situation. So he went five and zero in his two last seasons in the PFL. Now he has to get a finish in his next fight in order to qualify for the playoffs. He's not a finisher. I don't see him getting into the next next round. No, he won't be next round. And getting to that, you know who else probably won't be getting in there? Anthony Pettis. Yeah, which, uh, you know what, he, people forget, like, he got dominated. He did get dominated everywhere, mostly. Uh, but he did land a kick that almost put him out. Yeah, head kick followed by a flying knee. I don't know how Clay Collard ate that in the third round. And then on top of that, I don't know why Pettis didn't jump on top of him and finish the fight. It was a weird situation. Yeah, it was a, definitely a weird situation, but it is what it is. I actually thought Clay Collard, I think, predicted, I, I thought he was going to win. Yeah, uh, he did. So I just don't think Pettis is good at 155 anymore. I think he his last he's I think he's three and zero in his last uh, welterweight fights. He should stick at welterweight. 
Yeah, his last fight in the UFC was at welterweight, was it not? His last two against Alex Morano and Donald Cerrone, and then he lost to Carlos Ferreira. And but he yep. did lose to Nate Diaz at welterweight, but before that he beat Stephen Thompson. So he's three and one at welterweight. A lot in the UFC, way better. Yeah, yeah. Um, he definitely he did say he will be fighting at welterweight in the PFL. I think what he wants to do is win the title at 55, and then he's hoping Rory McDonald wins the welterweight title and they have a unification fight. But Pettis, unlike um, sorry, unlike Palmer, Pettis is a finisher. Pettis might get, get do something, might submit somebody, might head kick somebody. I can see him more than Palmer getting a, a finish in his next fight and getting onto the playoff. It just depends who he fights. Well, it depends who he fights, exactly. Uh, did you watch the co main event? Schulte uh, and, and Marcin Hell. Um, no, uh, Natan Schultz and Machine Hell. Oh, I do love Natan Schultz. It was a good fight, uh, but I, I thought Natan was going to win. He was supposed to come on our show, too. I could still get a hold of him. Uh, I was just talking to him yesterday, actually. Um, but uh, I was upset that he lost, but good on Martian. Uh, Martian uh, Dude, Marcin Held is a monster. This guy yeah, is a me. I don't see anyone in the 155-pound division messing with that guy. Maybe. Maybe Bubba Jenkins. Oh no, he's featherweight. No, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I think Marcin Hell should be the favorite to win it now. Yeah, he's a beast. He's a, the, both champions lost. Palmer and Schultz. That's nuts. Crazy. Okay. Competition's um, going up. Huh? Competition's getting way higher in PFL now, though. Oh man, the you the MMA all over the board is like that was a legit card. Like, I thoroughly enjoyed watching that card, top to bottom. Yeah. These guys could have competed in the UFC. 100%. A lot of them have. Okay. So, um, then we go over to the UFC card. Where do you want to start on that one? I just want to start out the main card. I'll shout out there was a couple of Fight of the Nights uh, scraps. I know all the Asian people on the card lost. On, not good for China on that card, but uh, went 0 and 4. But uh, let's talk about the main card. Opened with Anthony Smith versus Jimmy Croup. Man, this was the, the card of leg kicks, eh? Crazy. So Jimmy Crute uh, was coming out. He was landing some good leg kicks on Anthony Smith, but every time he threw a leg kick, uh, Anthony Smith was snapping that head back with a jab. His jab looked phenomenal. His jab looked amazing. Like his boxing is, I uh, looked the best it's ever looked. That was some of the best Anthony Smith we've ever seen. But that was also he looked the exact same way early in the Glover to Sheriff fight. Do you remember that? Yeah, but uh, the, uh, we don't know about his gas tank, right? He fades. He always looks like a stud, and then he fades. So it's good that he got that leg problem i guess so then he late in the second round or late in the first round he throws a, a leg kick to the back of uh Krut's lead leg and le his leg instantly died he fell down he couldn't really stand up on it but what kind of a monster just got to get two takedowns on one leg it's crazy jimmy crew you know what his stock probably went up in that fight because he didn't bitch out he was ready to go people said if he lost his fights do or die but that if he was going to lose a fight and that that's the way to do it uh, looked amazing losing. Dude, I don't think his, it wasn't do or die for, for uh, Crude. He's only 25. It was do or die for Anthony Smith. Yeah. Yeah. But um, Anthony Smith gets a big win. I think the fight to make now would be uh, Tiago Santos rematch. I like the Magnamed fight. Magnamed? Oh, and Kalev? Yeah. Isn't, isn't he a middleweight? No, he's like heavyweight. Remember, he fought oh, Ian. Yeah. The one that just beat Krilov. Yes. Yes, yes. But you, why do you keep wanting to fight these up-and-coming monsters? No, I want him to fight an established guy. Yeah, but I don't know. He's kind of a gatekeeper of that division. He is, but he's one big win away from a title shot, which is crazy. He was coming into that fight ranked number six. He should go up to number five. Or go down to middleweight again. Yeah, that's a big cut. He's a big. He's six foot four, man. He's not a small dude. I know. Okay, rolling on to the next fight. Uriah Hall... Hold on, hold on. Uriah Hall defeats Chris Weidman and becomes the first fighter in UFC history to win a fight without throwing a strike. Not landing a strike, throwing a strike. And that's four in a row for him. Dude, it's a win. I think this guy's got to get, he's got to be near that title shot. He's got to be near. Oh, for sure. He's had some big wins, Anderson Silva and Chris Weidman. I mean, that's two world champions, uh, two top 10 guys. You got to give him something big next. Even. You're, I'm not mad at Uriah Hall versus Robert Whitaker, but I know Whitaker's going to stay out for the title shot. But uh, Paul Costa rematch. Um, Brunson? But, uh, you like that fight? I like the Brunson fight for him. Brunson's good. They, had, they fought before Brunson won. Um, 
I would like to see Chris Wyman get well. Um, it's coincidence that he broke the leg the same way he silver broke his leg. It's just weird. Uh, but shout out to Chris Wyman. He had surgery. He's going to be back in six to 12 months, he says. But knowing that guy, I think he should retire. Yeah, so here's my take on that. Like, unfortunately, it sucks that he got injured the way that he did. He threw the first kick he throws, lands on Uriah Hall's knee. He checked it perfectly. His leg broke. But it's kind of bittersweet karma. This is kind of what happens when you cheer when you did the same thing to Anderson Silva. He got excited. He was – look, the way that Uriah Hall handled this win is the way you handle this win. He went – he prayed for y, uh, Wyman. He didn't celebrate. That's it. There's nothing to celebrate. You didn't do anything to win this fight, man. The same thing with Weidman. You didn't do anything to win this fight. You could have went this fight against them, and his leg could have broke, and you got the win. It's a fluke. It sucks. Like, it, it, it's just, but you can't be celebrating that. So it's just the way it goes. I agree with you. I don't think Chris Weidman should do it anymore. He, it's just, it's time to hang it up, man. End of the day, he's already a Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do it. He doesn't need to do it. If he does come back, I want to see him fight one more time, and then hopefully it's some tomato can they bring off that's like halfway wow. to. Yeah, but that's going to be exactly. tough. That's a tough go. Yeah. That's a tough go. Okay, then we're going on to the title fights. We had Valentina, the bullet, Shochenko taking on Jessica Andrade in what was an absolute slaughter. Yeah, she just destroyed her. I didn't think she'd uh, overpower her that much. Valentina's strong. Dude, that crucifix position <laughs> she had was just devastating. Yeah, uh, to stop Andrade and just demolish her everywhere. Shout out to uh, Valentina. I mean, I want to see the winner of Joanna Calderwood versus Lauren Murphy. I think Lauren Murphy's strength would be good in that fight, so I'm pulled for that one. I agree. I think Lauren Murphy should get that done, should get the title excuse me, should get the title shot. And um, I really think Andrade needs to go back down to 115 because she was tiny against Shevchenko. She's like five one. Her strength in the trilogy didn't... there. Huh? And there's a trilogy there. Right, the Rose trilogy, but she doesn't deserve a title fight right now. She'd have to go win a fight. Oh, for sure. I agree with that. Or a couple after that demolishing. That uh, brings us to Rose, actually. Rose Namajunas wins via first-round head kick against Zongwe. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Hey, her celebration was the best. So when she head kicked her, she did the... I don't know. I like that. That was pretty sick. Uh, uh, she seems like a really down-to-earth person, man. She just ended communism with one head kick. So, you know, there you go. I am the best. Dude, that moment with her and uh, her husband was amazing, though. Yeah, it was crazy. The whole time the ring, she's saying, I'm the best. I'm the best. The girl could be the best. It's a very strange. Like, she's 10 and 4, 11 and 4 or something. She has some losses you'd expect that she wouldn't have. Didn't she Plus lose she a couple? Yeah, she avenged a couple. Didn't she lose a Tisha Torres at one point? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just like, but then she elevates her game. She uh, She's... Three and zero in rematches, like it's like it's just crazy. And you never see her head kicks, like you never think she has power. But every time she's fought to win the title, she starts them. So like it's crazy. I think Rose, right? You have to have her as the number one, as the best flyweight, flyweight, strawweight, best strawweight of all time. She has to be. It's still a toss up with Joanna. She beat her twice. I don't care. And then she just head kicked Wei Li. She has, she's got a win with Andras. The only champ she hasn't beat is the Cookie Monster, and that no one cares about. And uh, it's probably next. If well, no, she's probably going to be fighting another Chinese fighter. Um, my girl Ig Suzanne. I can't even pronounce her name. Zhao Zan, who, who could beat uh, Carlos Spar- should beat Carlos Sparza, and that'll be the next fight for Rose. Yeah, yeah that, I'm good with that. Okay, now, made it. Huh? Now, let's get to Jorge. Dude, George Masvidal got absolutely sent to the deep, dark depths by Kamaru Usman. What did you think about it? Deep, dark depths of hell. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do my Vince McMahon impersonation. Um, yeah, he got sent to the Netherlands. He, uh, I don't know, um, he was too cocky. He kept his chin up way too high, and he just took that right because he was like this. He was talking shit like 10 seconds before then. You're an idiot. Yeah, so if you had asked me or if you had told me before the fight that uh, Usman's going to knock out Masvidal, I would have laughed at you and said, you're a casual, get that out of my face. Wait, 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 if you go back on the video, I, I called this. And I laughed at you. Yeah, I said he would knock him out in the first or second. 
That's insane. Reese called it too. I'm like, yo, you guys are tripping, man. I can't, I didn't understand. But here's the thing. Usman was doing the better work on the feet in the first round as well. It wasn't just a fluke that he landed a big right hand. He was outboxing in the first round. Masvidal's best moment in the fight was when he was on his back landing elbows. Yeah, he didn't do so much. He was just talking shit. It was a uh, flat performance, I, but I'm not going to say that that's what it was. He's had two chances to beat this guy, and he couldn't do it at the time. He got beat four or five rounds to nothing. The first fight, this one, he gets knocked out. Where does George Masvidal go now? If he can make the weight, maybe go out to one lightweight. Uh, okay, okay. Maybe him versus Mike Perry. No, dude, he's. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, if if he waits some time and Kobe loses, Kobe fights still there. Um, him and is the Amzat? Nah, I think I think when if Diaz loses to uh, Leon Edwards, you're gonna see that the run that one back. Yeah, they want to, they're gonna have to. Yeah, it makes sense because then they could at least boost the stardom of the Diaz or Jorge again, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of full circle, like the Weidman situation. This guy clowned Ben Ashkin for years after knocking him out with a flying knee, and he gets sent to just the land of wind and ghosts. The same way the man was. Did you see the way his head was hanging in the air, like off to the side? Well, for sure, he was done. Oh, it's brutal, man. Just brutal. But um, any last thoughts? Oh, Kamaru Usman. Is he the welterweight GOAT? No. Okay, good. I agree. People saying that is making me feel a little some type of way. But people say that after every fight. Yeah, but it's just like, why do we just forget about the people of the past? Like, if you look at GSP's resume, his resume is still superior to Usman's. It's not even competitive. It's because he fought three generations of people. And GSP, no offense, to won two titles. Exactly. But who... Who has Usman beat that's on the level of a Matt Hughes? A lot of people would say Kobe because a different time period would beat Matt Hughes back day, but that's irrelevant. That's a different fight. But at the time, yes, Matt Hughes is a bigger win. So I'm just, I'm just saying, you okay, he's got these guys. Maybe they're better fighters all around, but Matt Hughes would have a good chance of beating anybody in this division because of that wrestling. If you look at the credentials, yes, Kobe would beat Matt Hughes, right? But credentials-wise, Matt Hughes is a bigger win because he has the credentials of a world champion. He beat Johnny Hendricks, who was a world champion. Uh, you can't take that away from these guys. He beat BJ Penn, who was a world champion. These guys are world champions. Kobe's an interim champion, yes, but not a world champion. And Nick Diaz was a world champion. Yeah, he's he, like he beat world champion, world class guys. Um, like people say, oh, Josh Koscheck sucked. Well, guess what? At the time, Josh Koscheck was as height as a Kobe Covington. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, people just forget the past, and they live in the moment. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so that's all that I think we're going to say with the recap. But uh, and, let's and, get... and one last thing. GSP, in my opinion, would be the worst matchup for a Cam or Usman. We'll get into that conversation another day. That's an interesting fight. We'll get into another day. Okay, um, let's start with the... Sorry, the Actually, one we'll make a video of that, me and you. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, the one championship card. There's some good fights on here, man. You got uh, Shinya Aoki taking on Edward Foley-Aang. Interesting. Shinya Aoki, Shinya Aoki was supposed to fight um, uh, the with who's the sage. the say Super Sage Super Sage or whatever the frick his name is. Umar Kane, the uh, Rugaru, that Sangalese wrestler, is back taking on Kirill Grishenko. Not sure who he is, but. I really want to see the Sangley's wrestlers. That you want is pushing them very hard. Um, Eddie Alvarez is taking on OK Ray Yoon, who just fought last week. So I hope Eddie gets this fight because gets this W. His um, previous fight was that was a loss, got overturned to a no contest. So if he wins this one, he should get a title shot. Yeah, I hope so. And then in the main event, we have a rematch. Ong, La, Ong La and Sang taking on Rainer de Ritter, but this time at light heavyweight. Ong La's a beast. Yeah, but Rainer submitted him in the first round last time. I know, it's crazy. I don't know, I'm pulling for Ong La. I've been trying to get Rainer on the show for a few weeks, for almost like maybe a couple of months now, and he's not responding. So anybody out there, let Rainer know I want her on the show. Um, I'm going to back Rainer. I think Rainer's going to get it done. I think he gets it done again. All right. 
That's a big fight. That is because then if he beats him, he beats him for his light heavyweight title, and he already took his middleweight strap from him. Crazy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the, there's some good fights on the P, uh, PFL. We got Rory McDonald taking on uh, Melender. Uh, is it Curtis Melender? Yeah, it's Curtis Melender. He's in the UFC. He actually has a win over Mike Perry. If I'm wrong, I could be. I think he does. Uh, but there's also some like guys on the card, like UFC vets. Like you got Chris Kamanzi. Uh, Chris Mosey, sorry. Uh, you got Vinny Magalais. We're totally butchering these people's names. Like last time, I remember the guys like Roger Heredia, it's spelled like this. Who cares? Anyway, if you don't like our shit, get the f- off. Anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's a solid card. I think it's a weird matchup between Rory and Curtis because there's levels to this game and it should just be a jab fest for three rounds. It'll definitely be a 30 27. If you want to bet some easy money, go with Rory. Yeah, okay, but we also got to look at the last main event. Pettis was a four to one under a uh, favorite and he lost. So if Rory loses that, Pettis fights there. Yeah, yeah, but dude, I, Pettis, I mean, we need Rory to win the belt, man. We need to have Rory being a PFL belt or champion. Shout out to Canada, keeping it going for the team up here, the Great White North. Yeah. Okay, um, UFC card. Um, I haven't really looked at the undercards. Is there anything on here? You got. Mur- Murab Dev- Devishvili taking on Cody Stamen. That's a solid fight. Yeah, Murab should win, though. He should grapple him, just hold, I mean, control him for the three rounds. I forgot what camp he fights at, but it's a really good one. Ah, oh, shit. He trains with some good people. Aljo's team. He's with Aljo. Yeah, Aljo, yeah. Um, the, that's uh, Cub Swanson is taking on Giga Chikadze. Ch- Chikadze? Get a dictionary, Marshall. I'm I'm trying, man. Chick Godze. Oh, that's what we're going to Chick Godze. Yeah. So this fight, this whole uh, fight has fight of the night written all over it. If you know Cub Swanson, man, you can't go wrong with a Cub Swanson fight. I think his last fight was it, or he fought. He's won like a two fight winning streak, so he's kind of on a resurrection again. Uh, if he wins this fight, is he top fifteen? Oh, I thought he should have been top fifteen after his last win. So yes, hundred percent. Yeah. So he lost to Grace. He was on a four fight lose streak. Uh, oh, he- came back two in a row. He beat Gracie. Was it Gracie? Oh, he beat Gracie, yes. Yeah. So he's won two in a row, though. He lost to Shane Burgos by a split decision in his fourth he, loss. Daniel Pineda was his last fight. Which was a slugfest. Yes, and then he, bit, he he knocked him out in the second round, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and it was his first finish in a while. I love Cub. I love watching this dude fight. Um, he's, he's there in the top. 15 if he wins and i hope he does he should but giga is no joke um he's on a i think he's on a quite a bit of a win streak but cub swanson should turn this into a brawl and it will turn to a slugfest and i think cub swanson wins uh 29 28 split decision i'm honestly not too familiar with giga so take my pick with a grain of salt but I'm going to back Cub. He's rolling hot right now. He's training with the best. He's been training with Juan Archuleta and TJ Dillashaw all pandemic. I think before that even. So uh, I'm going Cub Swanson all the way. Shout out to, to the California kid. I think he gets Addiction and fight of the night too. Yeah, cool. Cub Swanson is involved. There's going to be some hands being thrown. I think he gets it done. I think he knocks him out. Really? Call me crazy. I'm going knockout. Main event. Dominic Reyes is taking on Yuri Prokaska. Does Dominic Reyes lose three in a row? Absolutely. Okay, I agree. Why do you say that? Uh, because if you look at the track record of Yuri, he is bound to be a UFC champion. That is my opinion. Uh, he is very not sluggish. Well, when we first seen him fight, like he's knocked out some big guys like King Mo and stuff out in the regional scene. He has some other big wins too. But He's 27 and three and he actually was, he, he was asked to sign with the UFC and he said he wasn't ready. Like he could have been in the UFC a while ago. Uh, he said he wasn't ready, wanted to get more experience. And this is going to benefit him. Um, he was very sloppy in the Vulcan Osamir fight. We were actually making fun of him and going like, what's this dude? He's swinging his head back and forth. Vulcan actually won the first round. And then he slumps him with this big, I think it was an overhand right. Uh, and we're like, it was deadly. It was Jorge Masvidal almost bad. And um, I don't know, man. I, I, I honestly think that Dominic Reyes doesn't has, have the best chin. Mm. He likes I, 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 Yuri Pokoska. His defense looked bad in the Ozmir fight. So I looked, I went and looked back at some other fights of his. 
and I watched the Nemkov fight, which he actually won. He beat Nemkov, which is a huge win. Um, his defense looked bad in that. So it's just the way he fights. He puts his chin out there to get hit. He gets hit a lot, but he can take a good shot. Um, I think Reyes will hit him. I don't think Reyes can be able to get rid of him. But uh, so, and, and I don't. But I don't think Reyes has got the hand speed to deal with the Yuri Prokoski. I think he's going to get countered all night, and I do think Yuri gets it done. But that defense is a liability. I don't see that defense being able to hold up against uh, Jan Blakovic or even like a Tiago Santos. Really? Well, Tiago is kind of not the same fighter, but I just think that Yuri will catch him over. It's a five round fight. If it was a three round fight, I'd favor more Dominic Reyes, but. Reyes is kind of going to fall off here. It's sad, but um, maybe they'll have to feed him another Chris Weidman, another middleweight to get him back to. I always thought that uh, he was kind of overrated. If he uh, loses, if he loses, I bet you he fights Lionheart. It, it makes sense. I mean, he needs to fight someone he can beat. I just don't think he's elite. He had a great showing. He showed he showed his best performance in a loss against John Jones. And uh, it's just one of those fights that like Gustafsson had against Jones. It's just sometimes it's part of the game. You show up and you have a great performance. And I just don't think Dominic Reyes is as good as he's made out to be. I don't think Dominic Reyes even beat Falcon Ozdemir back in the day. So I do think he is four and is one in his last four, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, and same with Tiago Santos. Had a great showing against Jones in the loss. And he hasn't been the same since either. So I agree. I think Yuri gets it done. I think Yuri will stop him. I'm going to say third round uh, knockout. I say second round. Second round. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to talk about if we get out of here? No, that's uh, it for today. Okay, guys, stay tuned. We're going to do a breakdown of uh, Usman versus uh, GSP coming up. So stay tuned for that. We're out. <laughs>